When you're working on a 1970 Challenger, pretty much every part you want is available. But if you're working on a 1962 Rambler, you probably can't get anything without finding used parts or making it yourself. This channel is all about making stuff yourself so you can save yourself a bunch of money or making it because you just can't get it. Today we're going to continue on working on the trunk floor extension here for the 1970 Challenger, but the techniques we're going to use today apply to any vehicle out there. I'm Mike and this is my car shop. Uh, where we left off last time I had started making this trunk extension and I do need Becky's help out here to be able to do some of the edge tipping and so forth. There are a couple of other ways we could possibly do this. Um, but I think we're going to go ahead and do edge tipping and get this tipped out. We still need to trim this back here, but I want to get this all bent in place first before we do that. The other thing that happened was I marked all of this out where these beads go, and I realized that uh, I marked it on the wrong side. It needs to be marked on this side in order to put those beads in properly because the beads roll from the back side and not the front side. So those do me absolutely no good when it comes to rolling those beads in there. As you can see here, they stick out and I stick in on that side. And well, if marking it this way, they would be doing the opposite, which is not what we want. Again, we're not trying to replicate the exact factory piece, but we still want to make a reasonable facsimile. So, uh, you know, it's just a stitches. It's not a factory, you know what it is, it's just stitches. So to do a lot of that edge tipping, like I said, I do need Becky's help, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay out those beads and get those ready to roll, I think I can roll those by myself. So let's start with that. And then I think we might move into trying to make the top piece uh, that mates with this, that goes this way into the trunk. Um, that way we have both pieces and uh, once we're done with this and get it all trimmed up, we can put them together and get that ready to install in the car. Okay, so I took time to lay out all the dimensions here so we know exactly where we need to go. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, I'm using the bottom points as this edge and this edge because these are two factory square edges. So one and three quarter inches down is about where everything is. So I'm just going to make some marks on here at about one and three quarter just to kind of give me some reference points. Uh, and then our first one is five and a half in. And then the second one is six and seven eighths in, so we're about there. So those are our two lines right there that we're laying out. And then this one comes down about six and a half inches from the top. So down in that ballpark. So that's where our straight lines are gonna be. Again, five and a half ish and six and seven eighths. So now we can kind of lay these out ish um, connect the lines there and we should be good to go. So you can see now we've got this, this, and this. So let's get the bead roller over here and uh, See if we can get these beads rolled in. I'm not sure I have a bead that's quite this big, uh, but one of the challenges doing this by myself is going to be getting the curvature of this right. Uh, we know that we're pretty close here, and I can't quite lay this out together, um, but we made a, a profile piece. I'm gonna go ahead and probably put this back in the pipe anvil and over bend it just a little bit, because it's gonna have a tendency to want to flatten out in the bead roller. For that once I roll these beads in here, I can't put it back in here to do this. So we're going to try to do as much as we can here to make sure this stays the way it is. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now i got to remember which way I need to bead this, which is okay. So I need to make sure that I don't do this side. This is the side we need. So I got my largest um, bead roller dies here that we're going to put on. I got to take the tip edge tipping piece off and get that out of the way. Get that switched over and then we'll start rolling those beads. I got to find my needle wrench. Got to pick 
pick up some extra uh, of these little set keys. They uh, only came with two, and I don't know why. So I only have enough for two dies, unfortunately. That one's got one in it, so we're good there. Okay, so we got our piece in there. And we're just going to tighten it down a little bit. we got to remember this is going to try to flatten out. Am I doing this right? Yes, the bead needs to be on the other side. So we're just going to kind of roll that in, let it go. Tighten it down about a half a turn. Go back the other way. It's the joy of doing things by yourself all the time, but it is what it is. That's pretty good. Let's take that one out and see how we did. So now we've got a nice little bead right there, hey? Very good. Let's do another one. Rolling a bead on a compound curve, like I said, it tends to flatten it out a little bit. So I tend to be a little bit I'll over bend the part. And when you're trying to make this upper edge here, you just simply line your line up basically with the center of the bolt hole. Same thing down at the bottom. Actually, I'll kind of line it up with this edge, outside edge of the bolt hole. It's not going to be perfect. We can come back and dress it up more if we need to. Okay, lather, rinse, and repeat. Four more to do. The other thing that I wanted to mention is it also tends to warp this surface, so we'll have to take the shrinker stretcher and go back and straighten that out. But we're getting uh, we're getting some nice beads in there. This way a little bit. We don't have quite enough. There we go. Very good. If you're going to do a lot of sheet metal work, I can't emphasize enough. Spend the money and buy yourself a bead roller. They're not that expensive. I paid a few hundred dollars for this from Eastwood, and there are definitely cheaper ones out there than this. Glad I did that because some of you may have noticed that I screwed up and rolled that one the wrong way. So let's fix that, show you how to do that, and then we'll roll this properly. So I just put my dolly in here and I'm just going to work this back and forth, just tapping this out. For some reason this crease here doesn't want to come out, so we'll flip the, the piece over. Of course you can see the other thing now is this is flattened them back out. So I gotta try to put that curve back in there, but I can't put this back in my pipe anvil because of these beads. So uh, yeah, I did a nice number on this thing. It'll be fine. I got some ideas exact. Oh, it just straightened out already. There we go. It just had a little oil can effect. So hopefully when we bead roll this from the other side, it's not going to be perfectly pretty. Uh, I think it's going to be respectable enough. I got a little more dolly work to do right there, and then we should be good. Okay, I actually went this way. I didn't have the camera on. I thought I did. Um, went this way and just dollied it on the edge right there. 
like that and it actually turned out very respectable so now we can put this back in our bead roller and uh, read the thing that I wrote on there so I would make sure to do it I wrote this side and I wrote no but I should have wrote do not bead roll from this side you stupid idiot this says this side now okay so we're good it's fine no big deal I'm actually kind of glad that I did screw it up because you got to see the process of how to fix it and what it's going to look like and it's not going to be perfect uh, I don't intend it to be perfect I don't care that much it's under the trunk floor in the car and I'm bead rolling it on the side that says this side You can kind of do that in the bead roller itself and you're not going to do it like a pipe anvil but you can still kind of put some curvature in there if you have to so the next thing now is we need to uh, get some nice beads there I laid this one out a little differently so no big deal uh, but we got some nice beads there so let's get this cleaned up so I believe we need to shrink this so uh, the blue one is our shrinker so we'll run this edge in here and hopefully that's going to work all right we shall see it would be nice to have one of the expensive shrinker stretchers that allows us to just step on stuff and use both hands but well that one's pretty good now must have shrunk in a different spot. Yep, that's what it was. You gotta kinda read the metal. For me, metal always surprises me. When I think I know what it's going to do, it ends up doing something different. So, uh, we just got a little work to do right here, no big deal. So I want to shoot this with some paint just to keep it from rusting, but I don't want to lose my lines. So I'm just going to cover that up a little bit just to keep from losing my layout lines for bead rolling so I don't have to redo that. We'll hit that with a little primer, then we'll hit it with some satin black, and then we'll let that dry and we'll flip it over and do the other side. that there is a little bit of wrinkling in there and that's because of where I screwed up but you shoot that with a little bit of uh, rust proofing or sound deadening or bed liner I'll probably do bed liner like I've done on other things it'll be fine again I don't care it's stitches you know we're stitching the car back together again so good enough 
Um, this will has got a little bit of mark from the shrinking and stretching up there. You can see, again, I don't care. I could dolly that out better and grind it down, but what would be the point? Uh, first of all, there's another piece that's going to attach to that uh, for the rest of the trunk extension. And it's just, it's fine. So we just got to wait for this to dry and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. So it's over here in front of the Universal Paint Dryer. We'll let that sit there for a half hour or so and dry up good. One of the nice things about living in Northern Country is I use my furnace all the time to force dry paint. But uh, it's lunchtime, so I think I will let that dry. We'll get some lunch. We'll check and see how that's going to turn out uh, after it's dried some and then make a plan on what's going to happen next. So we'll be right back after a brief message from our sponsor. Welcome back from lunch. It's hard to stay awake. All right, so I'm here looking at the passenger side trunk extension top. And I basically need to make this part uh, for the other side, over here. But I have nothing to work from. Uh, it's just gone. All I have is where the two pieces join together. So what we're gonna do is make a template. And I wanna explain a couple things about templates, when I use them, when I don't, and I, because I don't always. Um, but there's some things about fabricating that I think uh, would be beneficial for you to know. So let's get this thing flipped around. There is some discussion online about whether or not using templates is appropriate. And to me, that's kind of rule writing as far as I'm concerned, which is ironic since my last name is rule, but that's neither here nor there. Um, to me, it's just common sense. Do what makes sense. So if I was to make a patch, and let's say I wanted to make a patch for this area here, and cutting that out and putting a piece in, I would not make a template. I would just use a piece of metal, cut it bigger than the spot, and probably do a cut and butt and put it in there. And I don't think I've demonstrated a cut and butt here on the channel, but that doesn't matter. We'll do that sometime. Uh, but I would not make a template for that. However, when I'm making a piece completely from scratch because I have nothing to work with and I'm, I'm having to use the other side of the car as a pattern, then there's no other way, in my opinion, to do that than to use a template. So just common sense. Remember, I have said it before, and many of you don't believe me, but I will say this again. I am about the laziest person you would ever want to work with. I do not believe in lifting one finger more than I need to. Um, to do any of this work. I know that sounds a little bit crazy because I you know, make everything by hand and so forth. I do that because I enjoy it, I love it, and quite frankly, it saves me probably $10,000 on this project when I make everything by hand rather than buying all the material to do this. I'm just gonna do what makes the most sense and do what makes what is the simplest. Uh, and so I just encourage you with that is just look at your project, say, okay, that piece, I can just cut a piece to fit in there. I don't need to make a template. In the case of this trunk extension, I got nothing on this driver's side, so I'm making cardboard templates. So I'm just starting out by laying my template in here, or my cardboard in here, and I've lined up this edge with the top of the quarter panel extension, remembering that I'm gonna want it an inch bigger than that, or maybe three quarters of an inch to make that flange, but my template's not gonna have that, so I will just extend it onto the metal. But then the next thing I need to do is figure out where this joint is, or this seam is, where these two panels come together, which is right here, okay? So I'm just gonna make a mark up in this area, just so I got an idea where that is. And then I'm also going to just kinda come in here and mark my cardboard a lot bigger than it needs to be just to kind of give me a spot to cut it. I also want to come back here. Remember our edge is lined up all the way. I need to know where this seam is back here and it is right here. So now I'm getting an idea about how big this needs to be. Also remember that there is an L piece that folds down where the trunk floor joins the, the extension, so we'll have to take that into account. So I just marked another line over to remind myself of that. So we're gonna pull this out of here, cut this, and then fit it back in again so we can start trimming it this way. So we've got it a little bit closer, but it was a bit short back here. 
which means that this angle is off, which is fine, but I've left myself plenty of extra material up there. So I'm just gonna pull this back. Just to give myself a little extra before I start doing my final trim up here. Again, we wanna make sure that our edge is lined up all the way down, it's close, very close. Okay, very good. Now I can just kind of start to kind of form fit that down in there. So I'm going to make a line here, first of all, where I know that that seam is approximately, and then reminding myself that I need to do that. So we'll just double check that. Okay, I'm actually off quite a bit. So we're gonna bring that over more longs which is right there that's our line make sure our back line is still lined up we are so I can put a line from here to here and then here to here and cut that off and give myself some more material to work with the other thing I'm gonna do is just kind of come in here and just ballpark this around about where that needs to be for the most part it's a little bit long back here but that's all right our line is lining up good where the fold over is so that's good so we could literally fold this edge here and it would follow that trunk floor line. A couple of things that I want to point out here. There is a uh, tipped edge up there to go against that wheel well that goes down. Of course, we got the flange that I'm going to make. The original piece was just one piece, but I'm making it two piece. Uh, and of course, we got an edge to bend here. So when I cut this out of metal, I'm gonna cut it three quarters of an inch longer. I am not gonna put this edge on it up here because uh, I think I'm just going to take and weld a piece of metal in on that edge to make it follow the contour of the wheel well, especially since the wheel well on that uh, driver's side is really in bad shape and needs a lot of work and we'll be doing some more fabricating over there on that as well. My paint is still pretty tacky here, so I'm being real careful, but this is the front against the wheel well. Um, and so this piece here will be going in here like this against that. And you can see this is considerably shorter. When I gotta look at that and figure out why that is, I think I already know, but, uh, oh, I know why, because this is back about this far, that's part of it. Um, but we're in good shape where we're slowly getting this figured out. We, we know that our length, turn this around, our length of, um, of this, it's extra long. So you can see from this bead here down, uh, you know, I've got a lot of extra material in there yet. But this piece here will go like this, ish, in that ballpark. So, you know, like in here is where that is. I got that backwards, sorry. This is upside down. It's very confusing. And I gotta remember to invert it besides. So this, this is what I was doing as I was forgetting this is the opposite side. So it goes here like this. So this one would have been here like this. So now we're getting there. You see what I'm, what I'm driving at. Once I'm fairly confident I have this thing close to the right place, I'm going to do something really lazy again, the lazy man's thing. And I'm just gonna take and kind of burnish this a little bit to kind of make marks where those beads are in there so I can replicate those in the metal. This one I kind of screwed up here a little bit, but we can fix that, no problem. So they're kind of there and you can kind of see where they are. So just using the dirt, we'll double check those with measurement, but close enough. So when we take this from here, we flip it over, we put it over here, that's exactly where those will be. So I just roughed it out. I know they're not exactly right. Once we get the metal all done, we will um, dimension it out close, but that gives us an idea where it goes. So I want to remember this was the bottom side. This was the top on the, the uh, passenger side. So I'm flipping that over and this is the top on the, passenger, on the driver's side. And then this is the front. So I'm going to put bottom DS. So maybe we will keep ourselves from screwing up. All right, that's pretty nice. Uh, template there, we'll go over and get some sheet metal cut. So I'm just gonna mark out my edges where my bends are. And we'll have a little more trimming to do here, but you get the idea. 
we'll draw that line on there. And of course, we got to remember that this edge is our most important edge here because this is the edge we're going to be bending. And this will need to be trimmed off, but I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just going to slide this forward a little bit just to make sure that I have plenty down here. Okay. And of course, we know that this is the bottom side. So once I get this traced on here, we'll write bottom so that we know the other side is the top. We're not going to worry about that stuff right now. So we can get this, uh, we need to cut here. This is bend. And we got to draw a line across here that will be bend. And of course we need to make sure we bend it the right way because if this is the bottom, then we need to bend it this way. In other words, bend it to this side. So that, and when it's like this, both of those point down. Again, we're gonna just do the cutoff wheel technique that I showed you last time, back and forth. Um, probably actually do this one just this way, not back and forth. Um, so I can make sure I get that, to, just to cut that edge. This will have a flange on it eventually, but for now, we're just going to rough it in. Again, this is the bottom, so the bends come this way, so uh, we're going to make sure that we get that in the brake properly. to do is just make sure that I marked which side goes towards the quarter panel. This is the wheel well. I will put a mark for that. This is the trunk and of course this is the rear. You can tell by its butt cheeks. No, wait a minute. That's not right. Anyway, um, so just extensive notes so I don't screw up like I did before and we're going to bead from this side which means we want the bead roller in here to push down so that it looks like the other trunk panel that we've got in the car. So I spent a fair bit of time doing layout and calculating and realized that after all of that, it's a basically a 45 degree angle. It's so close, I just use my little cheap uh, Harbor Freight um, thingy bob, put it on there, good enough. So we can run these beads in here now. I honestly don't know what the other side looks like because I don't have it. So I may get online and just make sure that there may be a couple other beads in there. This is replicating the passenger side, but there is another hole in it up here that the driver's side doesn't have. So it may be these beads are a bit different. So before I do the final bead rolling on this, I want to get online, look at a trunk extension top um, for this car, just make sure. Again, I'm not trying to make it perfect. I just want to get it close. So I did just look and it is a bit different because the uh, jack for the, for the bumper jack mount is here. I'm not putting that in, so I don't care. Um, so I'm good with this, but there is. Um, so this one wouldn't be here normally. It's just one line, then two, then two, and then two more up here. So I'm gonna finish this out because these actually are whole length up here. And then I need to take and space this one out about the same distance here and add a couple of more up here further so that would be a distance of about seven centimeters because that's the quickest measurement I could see and then I believe it's about yeah just under two inches between them so two, two and seven eighths
going to have a problem. I didn't think of that. Darn it. I screwed up. I screwed up because I bent this edge and it doesn't allow room for the bead roller to move in and out because it's going to hit. Yep. Dang it. Well, we will unbend that edge, I guess. Or we can cut it off. I only need one of them gone. Which one's the best one? This one needs to be unbent. We just took it over to the wooden anvil and straightened that out. It's unfortunate I did that, but doo-doo occurs. <laughs> ah, still got issues here. Go this way. Yeah, we'll be all right this way. We'll do them all this way. Okay, so we'll work them all in and out this way. We'll be fine. Yep. There we go. Okay, that looks good. In spite of my screw up, it turned out pretty good. Um, it's got a little buckling in it and so forth, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll get that out of there once we start final assembly and getting it in the car. Uh, it's just a matter of doing a little shrinking and stretching. There's also a spot in it up in here where it's supposed to do this, so that's going to take some relief. I'm just not ready to do any of that yet. But uh, looking good, I want to DA this down, get it cleaned up, and get some paint on it so it doesn't rust anymore. Uh, as you can see, it's not bad, you know, it's a roughed in, fairly respectable piece, it's going to be good on the car, and like I said, it's got a little, it's got a little wow in it, that will be very, very easy to get out of there when it's time, um, but I don't want, I don't, there's no point in getting it out of there now, because again, it has that, it has that whoop, 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 or it bends a little bit up in here somewhere for the way the floor, trunk floor goes, so uh, yeah, let's get her cleaned up, and then we'll join it over with the other piece temporarily, just to see what it all looks like. as I can go on this today until I can get Becky out here to help me tip that edge uh, where we got to tip this edge and then this edge needs some work and we've got a bunch of trimming to do back here uh, but this is a pretty respectable part and I'm really happy with the way it's turning out like I said it's a little twisted um, but I've got to cut it anyway and there's stuff that's got to be done so it's fine for where we're at right now we're gonna just leave it like that until we take it to the next step and that'll be good so big progress i'm really happy with this hope you enjoyed the episode uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do you know all the routine i don't want to bore you with all that stuff we're on instagram and facebook forward slash my cars shop and it's most important i think around here you all know this by now you can't forget the one thing to always remember every moment of every day rock